Does love need to be blind? To some, love reflects familiarity, an emotion to allow the continuation of the species. To others, love is an emotion of selflessness, the only thing that can strip away self-absorption and make sure you appreciate the beauty and preciousness of someone or something else outside yourself. Hence, does love need to be blind in order for these things to be possible? No one's perfect. Most of the time that doesn't matter. You can have people in your life that can have an adverse effect on you, and if they do it too often, you can distance yourself from them. This is because, even if you liked them, you are completely aware that the situation has become too much for you, and you can still assess completely logically. If love worked in an equivalent way, society would be unsustainable. Imagine a couple with a child, and a disagreement between the two is had. If the only thing keeping them together was likability, the level at which their relationship would end would be a lot sooner. Love needs to be powerful enough that it rids you of pride and rationale to the point where as long as you feel it, the level at which you want to end the relationship is almost infinite. Once the love is lost, most relationships begin to decline. When questioned why you love someone, many people will comment on specific things that can explain the magnetism towards that person but very few can explain the shift between liking and loving someone. A pinpoint event of when that change came is a mystery. Just like the transition of puberty, it seems to have happened overnight. Deep-rooted in our subconscious, cogs seem to turn and understand things before our conscious mind does. Unlike the decision as to whether you like someone, which is often decided upon quickly, hidden processes weigh up the potential for love like downloading a computer update on a closed browser. Of course, love being a stronger emotion, it needs a longer time to be validated more than most emotions, but it does not seem to be assessed consciously. If love is the joining of beings being completely vulnerable to each other, stripping down every facade, opening up to their utmost potential, then would that be possible if the person knew the other would not be completely accepting? not wanting them to change because the feeling overrides everything else. In a way, the instinctive nature of trusting your body and mind to know that you feel this way for a reason is the same as trusting your body to breathe on its own. It is as natural as any autonomous function, programmed deep into us, but your body knows what it's doing even if you do not. Even when faced with someone attractive physically, mentally and financially, a spark may just not exist. Oppositely, falling in love can be extremely unnerving. Knowing that this person or thing has filled a void you may not have known you had, and having the potential for things to not work out and that void being left empty is unsettling. Them knowing you better than most people, knowing all your deepest and darkest secrets, and for them to not be in your life anymore, can spur on feeling of unworthiness and shame. Speaking on love, Alan Watts is quoted as saying, Taking this ghastly risk is the condition of there being life. You see, for all life is an act of faith and an act of gamble. The moment you take a step, you do so on an act of faith, because you do not really know that the floor is not going to give under your feet. The understanding that your body, through whatever means, thinks this will be a perfect partner, and regardless of the annoyances that would deter you if love were not in the picture, you still choose them. Love knows its role in the grand scheme of things, and it serves to not only find a perfect mate, but try its hardest to form the deepest and longest connection it can to create the environment where it will be able to learn as much as it can in the safest possible terms. Though modern times have brought about unprecedented safety and security for a substantial portion of the planet to grow and learn without the need for such an environment, does not mean that our emotions have adapted to this. Most of our emotional, mental and physiological are intrinsic in us. Even if we stray from romantic love, the love for your family and friends does not take place for the stability of an environment for your offspring. This can also be contextualized from our evolution. We are tribal people, and we understood a long time ago that prey was more easily killed, food more easily harvested, and the transference of knowledge between people in a larger group was a lot more of an effective way to go than everyone being inclined to be lone wolves. Loving your family is necessary in maintaining your tribe, 
due to families sometimes being made of people you would not necessarily seek out. Blood is thicker than water is a saying that describes how, through it all, family will be there throughout everything, even if they disagree with your actions or dislike you as a person, realizing that the world around our primitive ancestors was much more dangerous. And if the tribe was centered around liking everyone, and people were cast out depending on not being liked, the community could diminish in numbers very quickly. A tribe of 20 is much more efficient at defending and attacking other creatures, contrasted to a tribe of five. A mother whose son is a serial killer will still likely love him and want to protect him. The animalistic tendencies in people would mean that a mother would still see the serial killer as someone she cares for, despite the heinous crimes. When we were apes, our tribe loved us and saw us for what we represented, as opposed to what we may have done that made us unlikable. Nothing has changed. Only when that love has been eroded by actions that could affect the tribe or family does the relationship come to an end. If you continually abused your friends and family by stealing or being violent, something in us understands that you are not invaluable, but more so a problem to the longevity of the family, tribe, or even on a personal level. Love puts us in a position to keep us in groups as long as possible and allows most actions to be forgiven. Friends do not share the innate love that families do, but the love people feel for them can be attributed to a reflection of tribe mentality also. If a lone ape proved a valuable asset to a tribe, a relationship would be fostered and love would be forged, like any of the other tribe members. Hence, this love is more sparse and harder to forge because before love can develop, likability is the main factor at keeping a friend around. However, there will always be anomalies where friends and family do not do right by us and do not seem to have our backs. But that speaks more of the person and context than the actual emotion of love. We are born into this world cold, naked and alone. We come out clutching for someone to care for us, wanting another being to be open for a mutual dependency. Love keeps us blind to who and what the person is who beats our embrace.